Thanks for coming to my talk. Yeah, it's actually the last talk in my June tour. Yeah, I was traveling in the US, Latin America, and Europe. 10 flights, many cities. So it's an absolute pleasure for me to be here um, speaking uh, at DevConf CZ. It's my second time participating in this event. I really like it. It's, it's amazing. Uh, my name is Juarez Barbosa Jr. I work for Oracle as a senior principal Java developer evangelist. Uh, I have over 20 years of experience in IT. You can see some companies here, uh, interesting roles, and I'm a frequent speaker at some uh, tech conferences, and I focus on Java, Python, Cloud, DevOps. Those are primarily the technologies that I'm interested in, okay? But yes, uh, it's not a, a talk about my role and my profile, so yeah, let's uh, move to the interesting stuff. Uh, that's our agenda for today. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about AI and Gen AI and synthetic content, then move to <clears throat> just have a look at the uh, current status of AI in terms of the latest advancements and AGI and so on. Uh, then um, the next one is OpenAI, but it needs no introduction, right? Everyone knows OpenAI, ChatGPT, and everything else. Spring AI, which is quite interesting uh, as one of the main Java frameworks, uh, you know. And Spring AI is, of course, under the Spring uh, framework and ecosystem umbrella. Um, so it's just an interesting way of uh, accelerating the development of your uh, Java and AI related applications. And, and then I have to talk about uh, Oracle Database 22 AI as well, which is our um, latest release. It has support for vector data types, so it can act as a vector store. And on top of that, Oracle actually uh, extended uh, the SQL language a bit with some uh, specialized functions and things that you can use so you, you don't have to perform the low-level math calculation in case you want to use just, I don't know, pure JDBC and SQL, okay? If you decide that, okay, I don't want to use it with Spring, perhaps with another framework, you name it, Quarkus, or, you know, Micronaut, Halidon, all the frameworks. It's interesting anyway. Uh, plenty of features for developers as well. This release has over 300 features. And then I'll have uh, interesting demos here. Uh, I'll try to fit as many as I can. I have only 35 minutes, okay, so. Uh, but yeah, I'll try. Um, at the end, I'll provide you uh, links to some uh, tech references. And yes, and just, uh, <laughs> kind of disclaimer here, you know, in terms of the audience, uh, this talk is for software engineers and architects, uh, okay, um, basically developers, app developers, and not necessarily, you know, the machine learning engineers. So you should not expect, you know, statistics here, low level math, all that stuff, okay? I'm here just to show you how you can quickly create apps uh, with Spring AI, OpenAI, the Oracle database as well, and some of the APIs, options you have, different use cases, and that's it. All right. Okay, so let's talk about AI and Gen AI. Uh, 2024 is pretty much the year of Gen AI and AI, as we know, everyone is talking about it. All the tech companies, big tech, you know, everyone is learning about Gen AI. Uh, but uh, the interesting fact is that uh, with the advent of uh, Gen AI and the acceleration that happened, I don't know, over the last perhaps couple of years, we are seeing that um, central to that is something that we can call synthetic content, you know? Uh, because we, are, we talk about uh, generating things like text, um, images, videos uh, with models like Sora by OpenAI, uh, images, you can use DALI. I have a demo with DALI here. Uh, also, stable diffusion by Stability AI. And, you know, Chinese companies, they have their stuff as well. Um, 
This is just um, one of the cities uh, that I just visited um, in Brazil, Florianopolis, with a kind of futuristic cityscape, okay? All the images created with Gen AI. Uh, so at the end of the day, um, synthetic content is a thing now, right? Even for data sets, we can use um, that to train our data sets and the models and um, use those uh, data sets to improve the quality of our models. Uh, speaking of Gen AI, you know, in a nutshell and some core concepts, just to make sure that we can set the stage here and everyone will be on the same page. Um, it is all about, you know, the usual algorithms that we as software engineers are used to. But uh, with a different focus, we have the so-called transformer models. So GPT, the T in GPT stands for transformer, okay? And uh, those models, of course, they have the capability of generating content, including code that I forgot to mention, right? We have uh, GitHub Copilot, many other interesting initiatives, open source models by many companies, including, I don't know, IBM and Red Rat as well, you know, they are making um, uh, the um, interesting models available for code generation as well, and you can be creative and, you know, just reuse that to create your own solutions, right? In terms of content, I talked about it, text, images, videos, code, you know. And the generation is usually um, the result of an input, pro input, input prompt sorry, um, that you can use to interact with uh, the model or the Gen AI provider, an API, you know. There's a field called prompt engineering now, so some guys, they specialize in, you know, perhaps framing the questions and the ways that you can interact with a model the right way. And yes, and at the end of the day, we also have some ethical issues related to that, right? Misuse, deep fakes, um, which is a little bit scary, <laughs> depending on uh, the specific uh, tool that you are using, because it's really impressive. Bias and discrimination, and that's why we have those things like, you know, responsible AI, several initiatives by, you know, different companies and joint efforts around that. Automation and job replacements, uh, this one is, I would say, too difficult to talk about <laughs> because it will happen anyway, so we have to uh, try to upskill uh, to keep up with uh, uh, these uh, advancements. And of course, cybersecurity and cyber criminals because uh, those guys, they always try to you know, take advantage of technology to do uh, rogue things, right? Create uh, malicious apps and so on. So that's the thing for, uh, you know, the so-called crackers, right? The malicious uh, uh, hackers, okay? Um, yes, of course, on top of that, we have applications and that's uh, good news for us, okay? We can innovate, you know, uh, there's no better moment in uh, tech uh, actually to work with AI. Uh, and that's why I have highlighted here that AI is now a commodity because what is happening, it's um, somehow similar to what happened with uh, things like, I don't know, cloud technology and cloud computing. In the past, you know, uh, it, if I decided to deploy, uh, you know, a system that would be available internet-wide for everyone, I would have to acquire my own servers, you know, build my network, and have all the technicians and an entire team, and work and consider things like uh, the hardware depreciation, you know. So not only talking about uh, the OPEX or the operational costs and um, everything that we have related to that with cloud now, but also CAPEX. Right, but with AI now, same thing. Uh, given the abstraction that we are reaching, and you can see that all the big tech companies they are collaborating around AI-related initiatives. Right, so it is really um, a situation now that you don't have to be a deep learning machine learning engineer and understand the low-level details of all those algorithms. You know, we have those APIs and SDKs and everything exposing, you know, 
uh, the functionality for us, so we can just focus on creating, uh, you know, uh, things and great solutions. And of course, the ultimate goal, uh, I cited it uh, when I started my talk, is this thing called AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, um, because they want to actually, you know, it's not only about the, the so-called Turing test, but they also want to advance, you know, those models and algorithms and artificial in intelligence in general to be uh, at the same level, you know, on par with human beings, you know. Some areas, they are already there, like, uh, I don't know, speech uh, recognition, text translation, and so on, but other areas uh, still uh, have to evolve, but the thing is happening, okay? And that's why we have to talk about it, and, you know, it, and it's interesting as well, right? Again, speaking of open AI, I'm gonna be quick here because, you know, um, I have only 35 minutes, as you know, uh, it needs no introduction. We have this thing called NLP, you know, text processing, you know, tokens and blah, blah, blah. And the powerful pre-trained models are pre-trained and that's interesting because OpenAI is a kind of uh, PaaS or SaaS platform, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but at the end of the day, they are just giving you uh, everything and doing the have lifting for you in terms of training the model. Training is quite expensive, as, is, as you know. Um, as you may know, it uh, requires plenty of uh, hardware, uh, you know, uh, resources in terms of uh, the utilization, processor, disk, memory and indirectly uh, electricity as well, and that's expensive. And that's why when the companies train the models, you know, depending on the um, specific standard or perhaps, um, I don't know, um, technology that uh, you want to um, converge to, like on the ONX um, um, format and ONX runtime, you know, uh, the good thing is that there is now a kind of uh, de facto standard for interoperability regarding models, and you can also create uh, something called a checkpoint because it wouldn't make sense to start training a model and then you have to stop it at some point and then uh, have to restart it from the same um, 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 point, you know, uh, the initial point, you know, from scratch. So they have something called a checkpoint so they can uh, go and fine tune and optimize and then have a kind of a snapshot or a screenshot, you know, and save that, and then next time they just restart from this point. Uh, with that, of course, they are reducing costs because they are just, you know, building on top of uh, the investments regarding uh, hardware utilization that I talked about, okay? Yeah, um, uh, OpenAI has a REST API, that's why it's a kind of SaaS service that you can reuse, as I said, they encapsulate and abstract all the complexities and they just give you the uh, opportunity to use the service and leverage the powerful models and get amazing results. Of course, they have the scalable infrastructure to support that. Um, you know, uh, everyone knows about you know the investments by Microsoft regarding OpenAI. And a couple of days ago, uh, the company that I work for as well, Oracle, announced a partnership with OpenAI and Microsoft. Okay, we are doing many things with Microsoft and now OpenAI as well. Um, because our cloud is a, I can say, redesigned from scratch, second generation cloud, you know. Oracle used to have a cloud clou called uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Classic, but in 2018, we just restarted uh, a new uh, project using things like SSD disks, gigabit networks, you know, the total separation in terms of security regarding the control planes and user code and so on. So it's really well designed and scalable. And that's why, uh, you know, those companies, Microsoft, OpenAI, and we have also other interesting um, customers like uh, Uber, um, Zoom, and uh, TikTok as well. So, yeah, but let's proceed. Okay, uh, the interesting stuff now is Spring AI. Uh, good news is that it has uh, reached version 1.0.0 milestone one. Okay, so you will see that I still have code samples here using version 081. 
Okay, but I started to update and uh, I still have to finish that, but some of my examples will be using this uh, release as well, okay? I'm not gonna uh, go uh, deep in terms of concepts because uh, I assume that you will be able to get my deck after the presentation here, but this, this first link AI concepts, it is just a link to the uh, mainland page of the landing page of Spring AI, okay? You know Spring, so Java app framework, you know, uh, with several components and modules that you can use. Um, it facilitates uh, the collaboration with uh, those uh, several Gen AI providers like OpenAI, Cohere, you know, Mistral, and so on, right? Google and Amazon. And it follows the same approach regarding the philosophy in, um, at the core of the Spring framework in terms of having POJOs, components, annotations, and some, you know, uh, accelerators so you don't have to do, uh, do the have lifting and, you know, uh, avoid the boiler uh, plate code. Just create, uh, you know, your apps and that's it, okay? The link to Spring AI is at the bottom as well. Spring AI uh, with RAG now. RAG is a kind of technique that you can add more context to your interaction with uh, the Gen AI model. And, and that's interesting because, uh, you know, if I ask um, those models, uh, there's a way uh, or, or there's a matter of fact that actually if I ask a model about a uh, happening uh, or something that an event that happened a couple of days ago perhaps I will get a wrong answer you know and the same thing happens with uh, your uh, custom data or your company's data or your domain related data so RAG allows you to actually you know ingest documents and add um, and augment the context of this interaction to get more meaningful, um, I would say, answers, okay? In a nutshell, and uh, you know, from a bird's eye view, uh, that's it. Um, a couple of links here, uh, interesting uh, ones, you know, a amazing blog post, what is a rag? I do recommend you to have a look at it. Same thing with Gen AI, okay? Uh, and we'll have an example here, actually a couple of examples with RAG, okay, because we need a vector store to do RAG, okay, we can ingest PDF files, you know, JSON documents, you name it. Uh, my first example is, the, uh, is with the out-of-the-box vector store that is provided by Spring, okay, simple vector store. Uh, but there's an interface vector store that you can implement and then, you know, just uh, work towards implementing the methods that are enforced by its contract, as usual in Java, and, and then you can create your own vector store. What I have here is something that I created because I have these talks and I go to events, and that's my job, right? Uh, to, uh, I would say, evangelize and advocate for developers. But Oracle is at the moment finishing the official contribution to both open source projects, Spring AI, and also Langchain 4J, which is quite interesting as well. Possibly you've heard about it, uh, to have the official implementation of our vector store as well. Okay. Um, and yes, in a nutshell, here just to uh, you know summarize this step, uh, when we do rag. We read unstructured data, we convert uh, the data into tokens, we use embeddings and embedding models to actually perform some calculations. There's a model and algorithms as well that will extract the information and convert that into vectors, okay? And then we store those vectors in a vector database, and uh, that's basically what I have here with the Oracle Database 23 AI as well, okay? And in terms of you know coverage and what you can do with Spring, just a glimpse of it. It, it is actually um, better than that. But you can uh, do you know uh, chats and chatbots and uh, using the complete chat completion API, embeddings as I talked about, image generation, speech and transcription. Um, as an example, OpenAI released uh, the GPT-40 model now of Omni. You know, so you can do multimodal as well. And 
and it's really impressive because some people think, oh, this is just another um, release or they are just increasing the version of it. And no, when you, all my um, demos, I was using GPT-4 when I converted to the GPT-4.0. Oh, I, I started to get, you, know, you, you see the difference, you know, it's really evolving. Uh, it's a thing. Right, vector DBs and function calling, which is interesting as well, because function calling, uh, uh, when you interact with a model, it's a kind of active-passive, you know, um, relationship. Okay, but with function calling, there's a way that actually, uh, regarding the interaction, the model can also call an external function. Okay, so it becomes a kind of bidirectional uh, bi um, in integration and communication. So you can just uh, call a function to perform a calculation or do whatever you want, and then return that result to the model. And you know uh, that will be um, added uh, to the final uh, result, OK? Um, but that's it, guys. Uh, in terms of uh, you know the title of my talk, I just want to um, Point to a couple of things. The first recommendation, you know, uh, to achieve um, better performance is to use GraalVM and native image compilation. I think GraalVM needs no introduction either, right? Everyone knows about what is native compilation, native executables, and so on. Um, there's a, um, a plugin. Uh, as an example here, you can see a Maven plugin that you can easily use. It's just a matter of running it with the right params from the command line. And then my machine is a Windows one. So my example, uh, you can see a .exe file here. After this last talk here, I will publish a blog post with um, the content of this talk access to all the code samples and so on. I have a blog on Medium, so if you are interested in that, have a look later, OK? Second tip here, of course, is to use uh, virtual threads, right? Because virtual threads is amazing. Um, I, I really don't believe uh, what we uh, managed to, to get with virtual threads, because uh, at the end of the day, we improve the Java threading model. There is no one-to-one -one mapping relationship with the low-level underlying OS kernel uh, threads anymore, right? Um, by the way, I have a blog post that shows that easily you can just run uh, 1,500 queries with virtual threads, with platform threads. You'll see that there's no spike, you know, sharp increase in terms of the threads that are being used and, you know, and mapped to the OS kernel. Uh, but I, what I think is impressive with virtual threads is that they actually improved it, you know, um, I would say dramatically, okay, without uh, changing or disrupting the existing Java threading model, okay? And we know that in software, it is really easy for us to introduce complexity, right? The difficult thing is to, I would say, address requirements and provide a simple and good solution. And, and, and they, um, um, they've done both, OK? So some tips here, enable virtual threads with the Spring. It, it is just as easy as that. An example for the application.properties file here, use this property. If you prefer YM, it's pretty much the same mapping, right, as you know, in the Spring. And that's it, OK? Last one, um, I talked about it, so I'm going to be quick because I want to show some of the demos now. Uh, Oracle Database 23 AI, over to, uh, 300 new features. Many th uh, features are, <coughs> sorry, folks, 100% AI related, like AI vector search that I talked about, okay, with uh, the new functions and extensions and so on. Things for developers like uh, JSON relational duality, which is interesting as well. Have a look at that other stuff uh, related to mission critical as well, but that's it. Several versions of it. This QR code you can available, uh, you, you can download it. There are several versions available for free for developers. You can get VirtualBox, uh, you know, um, images and VMs, and you can get a container image as well. You can deploy that to the cloud, even our free tier regarding the Oracle Cloud um, infrastructure has a, um, Free version that you can deploy to the cloud, and depending on you know um, on your usage in terms of your utilization in terms of um, uh, storage, you know there's a free shout. 
if you don't uh, go uh, above uh, that, it will be free for you, you know, always free, you know, uh, lifelong offering, uh, free one, okay? Oh, sorry, this is a different language. I will skip this one. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, uh, let's shift gears now and move to the interesting um, stuff. Okay, so I'm going to sit here and we'll have a look at some of the demos that I have. Um, first one, let's do image uh, generation. Okay, so I have this quick project here. I'm skipping tests, of course, because I want to show you as many demos as I can. So let's do it uh, the quick way. Okay, so now I can run the app. In terms of uh, uh, source code, um, I can show you here application properties file, no tricks here. Uh, you can see that I'm just enabling uh, virtual threads. I have uh, an entry for my OpenAI um, key here. Uh, I'm using an environment variable just because I don't want to disclose my key. And the model is GPT-4.0, as I mentioned it. Okay. In terms of uh, this implementation, the usual Spring Boot app, you know, with the entry point, no tricks here. I have a configuration uh, for this image client from where I'm also uh, getting the value for my uh, OpenAI key. I have a controller, which is basically a REST controller uh, with a GET mapping, okay? As easy as that, and then uh, my service, I use uh, the image client to interact with OpenAI. I have this builder method here. You can see kind of a fluent interface. So I specify the model. That's DALI uh, tree, right? Uh, one of the imaging models from OpenAI. But remember, Spring also has properties to use stability AI. So you can also do a stable diffusion. Um, and uh, additional properties like height and, and, and width and so on. Then I can uh, just uh, perform uh, the call and create um, some images. So let's modify that, maybe. And OK, so let's uh, request a Tesla car with the Czech Republic flag. Hopefully, uh, that will work. Let me check if I still have a connection. I do. OK, so let's see what we can get from this call, <laughs> right? But you can see with Spring, it's so easy to interact with uh, those Gen AI providers. That's why we should definitely consider using a good framework for it, right? Well, it's take longer than expected. OK, the app is working. Oh, yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice one. Okay, I like this car. Yeah, I love this country. By the way, every time I come here, you know, it's amazing. Um, but yes, so you can see I have additional prompts here. But as I have less than ten minutes now, I'm gonna proceed to another example. Okay, with I think I need to use this tool to make it easier for us. Second one is a uh, chatbot. You know, a chat completion API. I forgot to show you my apologies, but in terms of uh, dependencies, I have the pawn here. Uh, this is using version, um, which one? 081. So in terms of the API, it's pretty much the same API, but with version 100 now, there's a Fluent API. They actually merged and mixed some of the components, but we still have the same components. So it's easy for you to convert code. And my second example is using the new uh, API, OK? Um, <coughs> so where is it? I have a problem with my mouse. I don't know what's going on. Uh, chatbot, OK, for this one, um, you will see that, yeah, I'm using a string, a Spring 330 and 100M1. One, one, one zero zero OK, that's 
already updated okay my chatbot same thing entry point here uh, I'm enabling chat history because in memory uh, or the memory is important because if I provide a code and ask a question and then uh, if I don't enable that and I ask a question about that code it will be like well, which code I don't know what you're talking about right so you have to incrementally uh, build it and have this oh my god my mouse is <sighs> Okay, cool. Um, then I have uh, this controller here, uh, chat um, bot service, you know, post mapping, and, and then I delegate it again, you know, same usual uh, architecture to my service, which has uh, the chat client. Okay, so I just, uh, with the chat client builder, I create an instance, and then I have the Fluent interface that I talked about here. You can see calls to prompt, change with user message. I insert the advisors, you know, uh, re uh, regarding a memory call, and I get the content. Okay, so, oh wow. Let's do it. So let me ask, uh, by the way, I live in Ireland, but, uh, I'm I'm there living for 10 years now, but I'm originally from Brazil. Uh, so I like this guy, Ariton Senna. Perhaps you know who he is if you like Formula One. Okay. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, this is uh, Gen AI, but you have to start the application, right? Otherwise, it does not work. Uh, come on. Okay, so, yeah. Let me copy this and run it. Okay. We'll be up and running quickly. Cool. And yeah, let's try it again. Hopefully we'll get yeah, Brazilian racing driver and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, you can see. Let me ask about my profile to see what I can get. Wow, I'm a football player. No, <laughs> I, I'd love to, but uh, my salary is not as good as that. But uh, and now. Um, as uh, we can see, you know, um, we can get imprecise um, results. And the last one that I want to show you is RAG. Okay. I have one document here. Um, this document. Okay. I will perform a direct call about this version of the Oracle database and I will get a wrong answer. Okay with the RAG implementation, and then I'll do the same thing after ingesting uh, the PDF document, okay? Which, by the way, I have the database here. If I perform a select on the specific table store, you'll see that I have uh, the embeddings here from a previous run. So this is the vector data. When I apply the embedding model, actually what I do is to convert that into vectors. Okay, I can show you here um, this example, I guess, yeah, you see. Uh, I have several properties here. This is the embeddings model that I talked about that converts uh, that into vectors, okay? This is the JDBC configuration for the Oracle database. I'm using a different pool here, UCP. I'm replacing Hickory as the default uh, uh, connection pool because UCP is better. And by the way, you can use it with open source databases as well. It is not just for the Oracle database. So let's do it. Uh, because my time is okay uh, we'll see some messages um, being logged here now because I will ingest that PDF file and then I'll show you just a couple of calls I will perform a direct call to open AI it does not involve rag okay so I will get an answer that is not so precise. And then after that, I will uh, perform a call um, to use the vector story that I created. And, and that's it. 
But yes, um, while I finish that, let me just uh, see if you want to ask some questions. Uh, unfortunately, I ran out of time. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Any questions, folks? By the way, I have other examples as well. I'll be here if you want. I can just present everything else. Okay, we can have a coffee. I can do it over a coffee. Um, but yeah, um, one question, Oracle. And then I will do what is Oracle Database 23 AI directly here. It has no clue about this version of the database, so it will come to me talking about 23C, which is the previous version of it, okay? As you can see here. And uh, the last one, I won't uh, show the out-of-the-box Spring Vector Store. I'll show you the one that I created by extending the interface. That's it. It's just a direct call. I didn't finish a fancy uh, UI for this one. Um, yeah. And if I look here for OJVM, you can see OJVM for FIPS, and you will see that this information is coming from my PDF. So that's RAG, okay? All right, folks, uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much again. Um, um, it was a pleasure to have this opportunity to present to you. And if you don't have questions now, feel free to approach me later. Okay. Okay, but um, I, I don't think I get the answer. Are you asking about uh, in coverage regarding both Python and Java? Or? Uh, yes, with Python we have, for example, we have LangChain for... Ah, PyTorch. Okay, PyTorch, you're talking about. Yeah, but PyTorch is actually at a different level um, because um, you can do the low level deep learning, machine learning, everything with it. Same thing with TensorFlow and so on, right? But the purpose of this framework is actually to frame uh, the context for giving developers better tools to, instead of having to work with the OpenAI, uh, REST API, you know, and creating your own HTTP request and configuring headers and blah, 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 you can just use the components and everything is there for you, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Okay, cool. Thank you so much.